In this lecture, I will describe some mathematical functions that relate to uh, the fitting of data um, with linear least squares fits, and also to the importing and exporting of data from um, files external to the program into and out of Mathematica. Uh, also, I'm going to create a table of fictitious data here uh, using a function called table, uh, which has many purposes in Mathematica, but here I'm going to use it to create a, a set of pretend data. So I choose some coefficients here, c0 and tau, and this data is in the form of an exponential decay, but with a bit of random noise, Gaussian random noise, tacked on in order to make the data look appropriately noisy. And so the data is in the form of, a, of pairs of the time value t and then the value of the exponential function with a little bit of noise tacked on, uh, where t is running from 0 to 10 in steps of 0.25. So if we evaluate that, um, then we get a table of pairs, a list of pairs like this. Uh, to see what that set of data actually looks like, I'm going to plot it with list plot. List plot takes um, a list of pairs as its first argument and then a set of options about exactly how you want the plot to look. Here I'm putting a frame on it, labeling the axes of the frame, and making a choice about what typeface and size to use uh, in the labels. So there's my noisy exponential data. Um, this being exponential data, if I plot this semi-log and plot the concentration the vertical axis uh, as the log of this value rather than the value itself, um, then I will see a roughly straight line. And this I do with list log plot, which works just the same as list plot, only you get a vertical log axis. Having created this set of data, I'm going to export it to a file. Um, with the function Mathematica function export. To tell Mathematica where I want to put the, the, uh, the file, I use this function called notebook directory, which by itself um, results in a string, which is the, um, the set of folders nested in folders nested in folders that points to where the notebook itself resides, and I want my data set to rest alongside that. So I take that string and concatenate it, that is, stick it together with the name of the file written as a string in double quotes, um, and this little operation here is sticking those two strings together. This then is the data I want to write, and this is the form I want to write it in, which is in the form of a table. So if I do that, I get a file decay dot text, which I could open with a text editor. If I had such a file from some other source, I could import it into Mathematica with the function import. And in this case, again, I construct the full path to the file by using notebook directory and sticking it to decay.txt and then um, telling it that the form is a table. I think actually, if I remember correctly, in this case, I could just put the name of the file because it will look alongside where the notebook is. Ah, if I remember first to set the directory that it's looking for things as the notebook directory. So if I do this, then whenever it looks for a file, it will look in the directory that is, in fact, the notebook directory, and then I don't need to type this full name. So if I do that, it will then read the data back in. So in general, that's how you deal with importing and exporting uh, data sets into Mathematica that come from or go to someplace else. So now we want to fit this data, which, you'll remember, uh, looks linear when you plot it semi-log. So to do a linear least squares fit to the data, uh, it makes sense to define the data so that the 
um, the y values are the logs of the old y values. To do that, we make a copy of the data set into a new variable called log data. And then what I want to do is to change log data in such a way that all of the y values, which are the second values of all the pairs, are replaced by their logs. So I do that, I access that second column by saying log data all rows second column with double brackets, which is whatever what you always use to access the elements of a list. And so this line here replaces all rows the second column with the log of what used to be in all rows the second column. So it writes over the second column the log of the old values. Now I can do a linear model fit, that is the name of the Mathematica function that does a linear least squares fit of data written as pairs. And the arguments of linear model fit are the functions that you want to include in the linear least squares fit and the variable that those functions depend on. So because I just want to plot a line rather than a parabola, the list of my functions is the function 1, i.e. the constant function, and the function t. And if I do that fit and save it into kfit, it will echo back the fitted model, which is a constant plus a linear term in t. If I had done a fit with a quadratic, then I would include comma t squared here, and I'm not going to save that into kfit, but if I do that, um, I will get back a fitted model which has a small uh, quadratic term. I can then plot that fitted function, decay fit, um, written as a function, it, is eval it can be evaluated. And so this right here, plot decay fit t of, from 0 to 10, plots that function. I then show that plot of the fitted function together with the plot of the log of the data values that I saved earlier in the variable log plot. So back up here when I made that plot, I saved the whole plot in the variable log plot. So then the function show combines those two plots in a single plot. And then we can see that the fitted line goes pretty much right through the data. If I want to see what the fitted function looks like plotted linearly, then I'll want to superimpose that, not this line, but the exponential of that, since that will undo the taking of the log, and I'll show that uh, on top of the linear plot, which again I saved uh, back here, the plot of the data plotted linear linear was saved in the variable linear plot, so I can superimpose those like this, and you can see that we've done essentially an exponential fit to the data. In any such fit, with a different set of random noise, we would have fit a slightly different line. And a statistical analysis that Mathematica will provide for us tells how much variation we might expect in the parameters of that line, assuming that the noise in this data is not reproducible but would have come out differently if we had had a different data set. And you access that by asking the fitted function for its parameter confidence interval table, like this. And doing that, we get the best fit values of the constant and linear term, which are the same as the ones reported here when we did the original model fit, but also the standard error in that, which is uh, by default um, the range of values uh, plus or minus this will have, I think, the 95% confidence interval. That is, it is very likely that any noisy data of the same amount of noise but different specific points 
would have given a coefficient that sits within 0 0.0625 blah 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 of this best value. And for convenience, it provides this confidence interval, which is just this best value plus or minus this standard error. Likewise, for the slope of the line, which is best fit value minus 0.277, etc., with a uh, standard error of 0.010, etc.